Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be painting a tank for the complete airbrush beginner. But first of all I want to say a huge thank you to graphicair.co.uk who sent me out the compressor and the Awata Eclipse airbrush out for review. If you check the description box down below you'll find a direct link to their web store and you can go and check them out for yourselves. Here you can see some of the products that I've got lined up for the tutorial today. Some of the paints I will not be using as I want to keep this tutorial absolutely basic so it's really easy to follow and you can understand the things that I'm doing. Okay guys with that being said let's get started. We're going to start by priming the tank using Alclad 2 white primer. This is a lacquer based primer guys and the fumes are quite harmful if inhaled so please make sure you're wearing a respirator and you're well ventilated. As you can see I've poured the primer into the airbrush cup and I've made sure that I'm putting the airbrush cap back on to make sure that I don't spill any of the paint. I'm priming the tank at 20 psi here guys. It's important that we spray at the correct psi guys. If we actually spray too high the paint pressure will be too great and the paint will hit the vehicle at too great a force and create splash marks. If the pressure was too low the paint wouldn't be able to be sprayed out of the airbrush correctly. So make sure that you change the pressure on your airbrush compressor to about 20 psi. As you can see I'm getting a nice smooth even coat here. I'm taking my time to build up the primer layer and I'm making sure that I'm very delicate when I move the tank not to get fingerprints on the paint. But to be honest guys, this lacquer primer dries really quickly. You may be able to see the spray paint pattern coming out of the airbrush. I'm spraying pretty far back on the trigger and I'm getting a wide spray pattern. This is because I'm only priming at this moment in time. Hopefully you can see in this video how effortly, effortless it is to prime using the Alclad primer and also how smooth and thin it goes down on the model. Now that we've primed the tank and let it dry for about half an hour, I'm coming back in with Vallejo Game Air Black. I'm pre-shading the tank here guys, and what that basically means is that I'm going around the whole of the tank on any area where there's a crack or crevice or a panel line, and I'm making sure that I add the Vallejo Game Air Black to the tank just to create shaded areas. In the previous video in this series I used Games Workshop paints. Now the reason I'm using Vallejo paints in this video is they come in handy dropper bottles and they're already pre-thinned. So I can just put them in my airbrush cup and start spraying straight away. It's important to note that the Vallejo paints I'm using here are Vallejo Game Air and that's a big difference between their normal game colour paints which aren't pre-thinned ready for the airbrush. So if you do want to follow this tutorial and get the Vallejo paints, it's the Vallejo Game Air paints that I'm using. As you can see guys, I'm slowly working away around the tank, creating all those shaded areas 
that are going to pop and show up later when we lay down the base colour which is going to be blue in this case. This is a really fun part of painting the tank pre-shading and it's also great to actually learn how to use the airbrush. Please don't worry if you go over any of the lines that you don't think there should be any shading because when we actually place down the base colour depending on how thick we put the paint down we can start to hide and mask the pre-shading lines so you can't really go wrong in this stage guys so take your time follow all the panel lines and we'll be left with a fully pre-shaded tank while I'm going around the tank pre-shading it I'll go over a little bit about the airbrush now the airbrush I'm using here is an Awata Eclipse CS airbrush and I find this to be an absolutely fantastic all-round airbrush. I find it absolutely great to paint using primers, varnishes and your regular paints and it's good for a multitude of tasks from base coating to highlighting and shading and anything in between. So if you're looking for your first airbrush, I highly recommend the Awata Clips CS Airbrush. Again, I'm painting at 20 psi here. And you can see how smoothly the paint is coming out of the airbrush. As you can see guys, the pre-shading is starting to build up lovely on the tank now and it's only going to take about 5 minutes to do this. If you was hand brushing a tank, it would take many hours to build up subsequent even smooth layers of paint. The airbrush can allow us to paint in a very quick and speedy manner. Now that we've finished pre-shading the vehicle, it's time to lay down our base coat. I'm going to be using Vallejo Game Air Magic Blue. It's important to spray the Magic Blue from quite a distance, so I'm doing this from about 4 to 6 inches away from the vehicle, and I'm only releasing a small amount of paint at a time. 
The reason for this is I want to control how much of that pre-shading shows through the blue. If I actually place down the blue too quickly, I'll paint over all of the pre-shading and we'll lose all of that nice shading work that we've achieved on the tank. So what we want to do is just build up that nice magic blue colour nice and slowly and as you can see the tank's really starting to pop just with that pre-shading and no highlights added. In this video guys it's going to be as I said at the start very basic I'm not going to do any brush painting on the vehicle or any of the uh, special tricks to make it uh, look better like panel line washing or dry brushing we're just going to stick to the basics of airbrushing. Again, you'll see that this is really quick to achieve a nice even base coat on the tank. And it's only going to take me three or four minutes to paint the whole of the tank um, with the base coat. Now we're going to create a dust effect using Vallejo Gain Air Earth. This is brilliant to actually add another dimension to the tank very simply. Again, I'm painting at 20 psi. I'm slowly pulling back on the airbrush trigger and releasing paint very slowly just to blend that earth colour into the bottom third of the tank. I'm also painting the tank tracks here in earth colour. There's a way of painting the tank tracks to get a really nice look. If you actually dry brush them afterwards with uh, a metallic paint, it will really show up the tank treads really nice and it's very simple and effective to do.
The last thing we're going to do in this video guys is use some AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish. The reason I'm using the Ultra Matte Varnish is one to protect the tank a little but more so to get rid of the sheen that's left behind from the satin finish of the Vallejo Game Air paints and just to tie in all of the paint work that we've done all together. And here we can see the tank finished. Now there's a lot that can be done to this tank to make it look better with a brush. Well, we can paint all the metallic areas on the tank and we can add details that way and we can add some pigments as well. But for the, the purpose of this video, I just wanted to show you how easy and how fun it can be to airbrush a tank if you're a beginner. So I hope you enjoyed this video guys. If you have, please hit the like button. Don't forget to share it amongst friends. And also, please don't forget to check the description box down below for graphicair.co.uk and you can check out more about the compressor and the airbrush that I used in this video on their web store. So thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.